very good evening everyone so uh, what we are going to talk about to, uh, today is the disorders of sexual development okay so this is a very important topic but very confusing and many of the candidates end up leaving this topic before their exam but have some clarity have some idea of uh, how do we approach a case of an ambiguous genitalia okay this is important before we proceed to understand the approach we need to have a clarity on the development of the external genitalia and how the internal genitalia is developed so if we are talking about a male external genitalia then it is the chromosome is a 46 xy the y chromosome contains the sry gene the sry gene is responsible for the development of the testis okay now this is because of the presence of the testicular de testis determining factor tdf on the sry gene which is responsible for development of the testis now, once the testis is developed, there are two kinds of cells in the testis, okay? One is the Sertoli cells, okay? Other is the Lenig Lenig cells. The Sertoli cells are responsible for production of Mullerian inhibiting substance. So now, what is Mullerian inhibiting substance? This is the substance which is responsible for disappearance of the paramecin affected, that is a Mullerian duct, which is responsible for the uh, uterus formation and the fallopian into formation in the females. So when there is a Mullerian immunitic substance released from the Sertoli cell, this is responsible for, that's why there is absence of uterus and absence of fallopian tubes and cervix in the, in the males. Okay, in Leydig cells, what happens? They release testosterone. What will the test testosterone do? The testosterone is converted to a more potent dihydrotestosterone in the presence of 5-alpha reductase. And together, this acts on the androgen receptors which help in the formation of the male external genitalia okay so the development of the male external genitalia is under the influence of the testosterone and the re regression of the paramesonephric ducts or the mullerian substance is under the influence of the sertoli cell released mullerian inhibiting substance so if i tell you during the discussion of dsd that the patient has a testis okay as long as the patient has a normal testis that patient will definitely have absence of uterus okay the uterus will not be there and that patient will see uh, will produce testosterone okay this much of information we should have when we are talking about the when we are going to start about discussing on the ambiguous genitalia we will take build our concept slowly on this this is the this is the basic uh, foundation of the whole principle now when we talk about a 46 xy dsd so we are going to take up a scenario where we have the karyotype of 46 xy that means this this uh, patient is going to have testis okay now if we talk about a condition where there is a pure gonadal dysgenesis 46 xy pure gonadal dysgenesis this kind of patients will have dysgenetic testis that means they will have strict testis now, what happens if the testis is not working properly, testis has not developed, that means the Mullerian inhibiting substance will also not be there. So, this kind of patients are going to have uterus, fallopian tubes, and cervix. Okay, all the structures will be present because Mullerian inhibiting substance is not being produced from the testis. The testis is not working, so testosterone is also not there. So, this kind of patient will have female external genitalia. Because the testosterone is not there, that's why they will have no dihydrotestosterone. They will have female external genitalia. Okay, so how does of so this kind of patient will have female external genitalia with presence of uterus and fallopian tubes? So you raise them as a normal girl child, and until the child reaches puberty, or uh, they will be uh, or even uh, later on in their life, they will develop infertility. So when you evaluate them, then you come to do the do the karyotyping and you realize that they have 46XY. Okay, because they neither have ovaries, therefore they cannot do uh they can this infertility cannot be treated by uh so you have to do an ovarian implantation in them or over oocyte transfer in them. Okay. So once you do an oocyte transfer, since they have a uterus present, they can uh, they can undergo pregnancy. So this is the how the uh, scenario of a 46 xy pure gonadal dysgenesis will be presented to you. Once you know the basics of it, you can easily find out what the internal genitalia will be there, what the external genitalia will appear, and what will be the common presentation of that. 
If we take up another scenario, suppose we take a 46 xy. Now, if there is a mixed gonadal dysgenesis, now in that scenario, there will be 46 xy and x6 both. Okay. Now, this kind of patients will have a testis and an ovary as well. Since the testis is present, this testis is going to release inhibiting substance and the uterus will be therefore absent. If you look at the testis again, that will produce a testosterone. So the external genitalia will be of males. Okay. Male external genitalia. What about the ovaries? If you get an ultrasound, you'll find ovaries as well. So they will have, these are also known as ovotesticular DSD. Okay. There can be different combinations in a mixed gonadal dysgenesis. You might find in some books that's given 46XY, 46 x0 in that case you will find the ovary is present but it is streaked okay if the 46 x0 is there so you just try to think what the scenario has been given and try to understand the karyotypic association with that then only you will be make, making avoiding any mistakes in your answer okay be very clear in that now suppose you take up a scenario on androgen insensitivity syndrome so in androgen insensitivity syndrome, they will have 46 XY. Now they will have normal testis. They will be producing mullerian inhibiting substance. Now mullerian inhibiting substance will lead to their full absence of uterus. Okay. Now if the similarly, the, since the testis is present, they will produce the testosterone. They will convert it into dihydrotestosterone, but none of them will be acting on the androgen receptors because there is insensitive receptors are not working. The androgens cannot bind to the receptor, so the binding is even if present that is not working. Okay, so therefore the genitalia will be female external genitalia. Okay, so this kind of female external genitalia with absence of uterus is a worse scenario than the pure gonadal dysgenesis. In a pure gonadal dysgenesis, you can consider oocyte transfer and pregnancy can be achieved, but here the genitalia is female, you raise them up as female. And then you realize that uh, there is amenorrhea and infertility later on or delayed puberty, which is why they have presented to you. And then you do one evaluation, you find this girl child is actually in 46XY. Okay. So these are important scenarios. You should know the very clearly what is the presentation and why are they having this kind of presentation. There is another scenario in 46XY DSD that is. 5 alpha reductase deficiency. Now, in that scenario, again, if you look at this, the everything will be same except for the so even there will be a the receptors are working, but again, they will have an external genitalia of female because the dihydrotestosterone will be deficient, okay, because of the deficiency of the enzyme which is responsible for its formation. So they will have female external genitalia, they will have the absence of uterus and uh, they will be raised as a female girl child. Okay, so this is important. How do you approach a case of 46 XY DSD? 46 XS DSD is very simple. There is only two scenarios in this. When you first see a 46 XS DSD ambiguous genitalia, the first thing that should come into your mind is a congenital adrenal hyperplasia. What happens in them is basically an enzyme deficiency, deficiency that is uh, 21 hydroxylase or 3 beta hydroxylase or 11 beta hydroxylase. Now, why the, when the enzymes are deficient, now what is happening in the adrenal cortex, these enzymes are responsible for formation of the glucocorticoids and mineralocorticoids. When these enzymes are deficient, the all the, uh, and the, the, the old pathway is deviated towards formation of the androgens. Therefore, there is increased production of the adrenal androgens. Okay, now these androgens are going to cause virilization, will go, will going to give appearance of a male external genitalia. We again come back to the basic thing, the external genitalia is dependent on the androgens. So we get male external genitalia in them, no doubt. Since the male corticoids are deficient, the salt will not be absorbed, so there will be salt wasting. Okay, that is one of the most common presentation in 75% of the children. They present with salt wasting. The 25% of them will present with virilization. So these are the common presentations. Why do they present like this? You should have a clarity on this. What is the external genitalia? What is the karyotype? So they have ovaries with them. Okay, so they are 46XX. There are normal ovaries. They will have normal uterus. 
everything will be there except for the male external genitalia. Okay, so this can even sometime present in the emergency because of the salt wasting. So make sure what is the treatment of this is you have to give replenishment, replenish the steroids. Okay, you give steroid supplement, you can give hydrocortisone, fludrocortisone. Okay, so these are the common things you should know when to deal with the case of a CAH. Now there is a pure gonadal dysgenesis we have discussed in the just now in the last slide in the 46XX. Now there can be 46X, uh, sorry, X5. In the 46XX DSD can also have pure gonadal dysgenesis. This time it's very simple to deduce what is going to be the outcome. In a 46XX pure gonadal dysgenesis, the ovaries are streaked. Okay. The testis is absent, so they will definitely not have external genitalia of males. They will have a female external genitalia. Okay. So they will have even uh, uterus and everything will be present. However, the ovaries are not there. So this kind of patients are going to come with I mean, uh, infertility and uh, delayed puberty. So what are you going to do? Do you have to give hormonal replacement, hormonal replacement with estrogen and progesterone? So trust me, all this is given in Oxford, but this becomes very difficult to understand from the table. Okay, suppose this, you take this, uh, just now the last one that we discussed, they will have streak ovaries, they will be presented with amenorrhea, and the treatment is a cyclical hormone replacement. Over testicular DSD, they will have both XX and XY, they will have ovary and testis as well. Predominantly, they have a male genitalia, we have just now discussed here. Sorry, yeah. Over testicular DSD, predominantly, they will have a male external genitalia because the test is, if the testis is normal, okay. So this kind of scenarios, uh, trust me, you will be getting in your exams and you should be very confident. Suppose you get a scenario of androgen insensitivity, we have discussed, they will predominantly have a female external genitalia and uh, the uterus and all, what will happen to them? They will be absent. So there will be a short blind ending vagina, okay? This test is can lead to uh, malignancy. So you have to consider doing a gonado, gonadectomy after puberty. So this kind of patients have to be raised as a girl child. Okay, you have to do a gonadectomy in that. It's very simple. If you understand the basic physiology, the whole discussion on ambiguous genitalia becomes easy. Try to go through these four, five, six conditions that we have discussed, four here, two here. So total six conditions we have discussed. Try to revise them. Try to go through them. I think it's very simple. If you have the basic idea of the physiology, you can easily mark any option correctly. So thank you for your listening. And we'll be uploading more videos. Stay tuned. Thank you.